Hey guys, and welcome to today's video. So if my face looks really red, it's because I just scrubbed off all the makeup because I just filmed this video and like the whole video and then realized that my microphone was off and the whole video was gonna be silent. So if you follow me on Instagram, I vented there, but here we are, we're doing it again because I'm really excited about this video. So this video was inspired by my last one, my Battle of the Dupes video, where I used this L'Oreal True Match Foundation and I remembered how much I love it and why it's still around because it's such a great foundation and it made me want to go back through my collection and find other really old products that I've had forever and ever and see if I still love them and give them another chance. Maybe bring them back to my makeup drawer because all I ever use is brand new launches that I'm trying or makeup I've discovered within the last year or so. So I wanted to kind of shop my own stash and see if I love this makeup as much as I used to. So with that, let's go ahead and get right into it. So obviously the foundation I'm going to be using is this L'Oreal True Match Foundation. I'm going to shake it up really good and just put some on the back of my hand. I'm kind of between shades W3 and W4. So depending on the time of year, I can go either way. Right now I'm using W3 and I feel like it's a pretty good match because I didn't get a whole lot of sun this summer. And this is just such a gorgeous foundation. There's a reason that this has been around as long as it has and it's stayed as popular as it stayed because this works on all skin tones. Like yeah, you're gonna have to blot if you are oily like me, but it's still gonna look beautiful. It's still gonna last on your skin. For those of you that didn't see that dupe video, I have an eyelash. For those of you that didn't see that dupe video, even though I got shiny with this foundation, the rest of my makeup didn't break down and I didn't touch up at all throughout the day, which I normally would with any foundation. And I was just so impressed by how well this stacked up to a $64 foundation. And I feel like this is also just really underrated on mature skin because my mom uses this foundation and she loves it. She hates things that feel cakey, that feel really thick, but she also hates super matte products and this is just the perfect medium. I just love that it's no frills, does the job, and I feel like this is gonna become one of my new go-tos. All right, for concealer, this was my holy grail concealer back in like 2017, 2018, I loved this concealer. I talked about it all the time, but I haven't used it in a really long time. And it is the Catrice Liquid Camouflage High Coverage Concealer. I have mine in a really light shade, 005 Light Natural. So it's definitely gonna brighten things up quite a bit. And it's a really thin consistency. So it feels really natural, even though it's a high coverage concealer. So I'm going to blend this out with my go-to. I think I put a little too much on, but we'll blend it on the lid as well. It's a prep for eyeshadow, but it's so blendable, so thin. I would say that like the L'Oreal Infallible concealer has better coverage and the Milani concealer has better coverage than this. I remember when I first tried this, I was like, oh my god, this is such high coverage, this is so full coverage. But it seems like that the term full coverage has evolved into like war paint. And there are some concealers out there that like you can't see anything. You can't see anything peeking through. And like I see some blueness peeking through this concealer. So I wouldn't say this is a true full coverage concealer. But like I said, it's really thin, really blendable, and I know from experience that it lasts on me all day. So do I love this as much as I remember loving it? Not quite as much. All right, for powder, I'm going way back old school and using this Airspun Loose Face Powder. This is the original formula. I remember when people first started discovering this and they were like, oh my God, this is a dupe for the Laura Mercier translucent powder and it became all the rage. And so of course I got it to try it for myself and I remember it being a beautiful powder. This is the Eco Tools powder brush. But this scent, this is the reason I stopped using it, was the fragrance. It smells like baby powder, but stronger. I'm pretty sure they came out with a fragrance-free one. So let me know in the comments if the fragrance-free one is just as good. But in terms of this original one, I don't think I can do it. I'm struggling with continuing to put it on my face because of how strong the fragrance is. Whew. Okay, moving on to bronzer. This was one of my absolute favorite bronzers ever. I got it in a different shade than I used to have it in, but same formula, and it is the number seven bronzer. I had this in the shade Maple a while ago, and that's a lot more cool toned than this shade. This is the shade 
caramel and I remember absolutely loving this and wearing it all the time but I went for a warmer shade because it is summertime. It just makes me look like bronzy and sun-kissed. I don't know why it's taken me so long to pull this bronzer back out because it's as amazing as I remember it being. And I'm just using this BH Cosmetics brush number two from that Marble Lux brush collection that I raved about. Let me know those of you that picked up that brush collection what you think. I've seen a lot of people comment that they got them on sale and that they love them and I love hearing that from you guys. Okay so for blush this is the only product I think I'm using that is not available anymore but I cannot part with it. I've had this for probably five or six years and I just love it so much that I don't see myself ever throwing it away. And it is this palette by Sonia Kashuk. First of all, the packaging is so beautiful. It's made in Italy, and this is called Pretty Cheeky Face Palette. It's got a mirror built in, and then it has the most beautiful blush shade ever. A beautiful bronzer, and this highlight is everything. But I'm just going to use the blush from this today on that same brush I used for the number 7 bronzer. It's such a vibrant, oh, vibrant blush color. Very warm but somehow just so, so wearable. I miss Sonia Kashuk makeup so much. I know you can still get it. I see it sometimes on walmart.com. I don't know how legit that is. I sometimes see it there. I sometimes see it on eBay, but I miss just being able to go buy it at Target because her cream bronzer was to die for. That was one of my absolute favorite makeup products in general, and now it's gone. All right, and then for highlight, I'm using another number seven product that I used to be obsessed with, but I have not reached for this in forever and I don't know why. This is the Shimmer Palette in the shade Caramel. It's got like a pinky shade and then it leads all the way down to more like bronzy highlights. And I like to just swirl a brush in and mix all the colors together. This is the Wet n Wild brush. And look at that. And I'm pretty positive this is still available. I'll make sure. And I'll link all these products down below. So for brows, I decided to go with the brow product that was the very first brow pencil I ever bought and it's the e.l.f. Instant Brow Pencil. This is the best brow pencil for beginners because I didn't start filling my brows in until I was, I wanna say I was like 18. I know 12 year olds now look like they are Instagram models, but back in my day, we looked like total dorks at that age and did not have makeup figured out for a very long time. And I was really intimidated, probably most intimidated by brows when I started doing my makeup. And this just took the intimidation out of it. This is, like I said, the best brow product for beginners. And I would say it's probably the best brow product for people in a hurry, whether you're a busy mom or you're a nurse or some, somebody that has to get ready really quickly and get out the door. This is just like a crayon that you can be super careless with and somehow it still ends up looking good. All right, for eyes, I decided to go with this e.l.f. Need It Nude palette. I have definitely been using their new ones all the time, like their Bite Size palette and their Retro Paradise palette, but this old school packaging just took me back and made me wanna dip back into this palette. So, like I said, this is Need It Nude. I'm gonna take this like pinky shade all the way through the crease on my Ultra Ego number three brush. I know a lot of people are in tough, financial positions right now and if that's the case for you and these videos are kind of like an escape for you I hope you never feel pressured to buy anything or never feel like you know what you have in your collection isn't good enough and that's part of why I wanted to make this video because I feel like we're all always trying all the new releases which is fun and exciting and don't get me wrong I love doing it but just like I did the hidden gems at the drugstore video I feel like there's also just hidden gems in our makeup collections at home. So if you're in a tough financial spot and you just wanna feel excited about a makeup product again, just shop your own stash. I guarantee you there's something in there that you have not used in a really long time that maybe you could get really re-excited about. All right, next I'm gonna take this pinky shade right here all over the lid. I wanna keep today's look kind of soft because we are going and just kind of hanging out with family outside today, so I don't wanna be full, full glam. Oh, this is so beautiful. It blends so nicely. And this shade is stunning. This would be really pretty for like a bridal lid color. The only thing that I'm not loving about this palette is I feel like there's not really a good in-between shade for the crease. There's really just this light pink shade that I used, and then these shades are the other matte shades. So it's like, you can either go super, super soft or super, super dark. 
there's not really an in-between. So I'm gonna take my number seven bronzer and also put this through the crease just to make it a little bit more intense, but still very daytime friendly. And then I'm gonna take that bronzer also along my lower lash line. And this is just the e.l.f. Beautifully Precise Eye Brush or Pencil Brush. And then I'm gonna just take some highlighter in my inner corners. So I feel like so far, things I probably wouldn't repurchase again would be the Airspun Powder because of the fragrance and that needed nude eyeshadow palette because I don't feel like it's a super cohesive palette in terms of transition colors. And Elf has just come out with much better formulas. All right, next up is mascara, and this was my number one mascara back when I did the best drugstore mascaras video in 2017. This was my number one, and it is the Maybelline Lash Sensational. I feel like the reason I stopped using this, first of all, is because there were so many other mascaras coming out, but also because I felt like it was really hard to get off. And I said this when I was filming this video like 30 minutes ago. Um, but I was like, maybe I'm wrong about that. And then, as fate would have it, I had to refilm the video, so I had to go wash it off. And it was hard to get off, so I was right, and that's why, and that's one of the main reasons I stopped using it. Which may sound silly because it is a fantastic mascara, but I am the type of person that when I am ready to get in bed, I am ready to get in bed. I know there's lots of people that get hangry, but I'm the type of person that gets angry when I'm tired, a lot more so than when I'm hungry. But this is, I mean, it's as beautiful as I remember, and it's layering so nicely without getting clumpy. That's really just one generous coat, and look how much it lifted my lashes without even using a lash curler. And also put some on my lower lash line, not as much as my upper lash line, but just to darken up those lashes again, because they have like foundation and concealer that lighten them up. But I can definitely see why I love this so much, because this is a good lash day if I've ever had one. All right, and then last up for lips. This is something else that I used to love and rave about, and I feel like it's just such a practical product. And it's this Revlon Color Stain something something the text is cut off here so i'll write the full name down in the description below this is in the shade honey doce i hope i'm saying that right but it's basically like a tinted chapstick that also stains your lips the only thing that i don't like about tinted chapsticks is that they don't last they are not long wearing and you constantly have to reapply it which is fine because it's nourishing your lips and it's easy to reapply without a mirror but I love that this also stains your lips, so it's kind of taking that problem away. And you can reapply it in your own time. So I'm gonna go in with this shade, which is so wearable, because my lips are kind of dry right now. Yes, yes, I love this as much as I remember. It just brings your lips to life. It feels really comfortable. It feels like you have a lip treatment on, but it also looks like a beautiful lipstick with a little bit of a sheen. So it just looks like a really healthy lip. And that is everything. Those are all of my old favorites that I wanted to re-put to the test and see if I still loved them. And by and large, I did with the exception of the smell of this powder and this eyeshadow palette, just because I think there's better ones out there. If you enjoyed this video, give it a thumbs up. Check out all the products that I talked about in the description box below. Don't forget to subscribe while you're here, and don't forget to go shop your own stash and re-fall in love with makeup that you already have. And I will see you guys in my next one.